Calling All Authors, the Your Book, Your Voice podcast with host Robert A. Lane features everything you need to know about narrating your audio book, but it doesn't stop there. We have special guests lined up from all aspects of the book publishing industry, and we also dive deep into what it takes to be mentally prepared for success as an author and in life. So please welcome your host, Robert A. Lane. All right, my friends, how are you today? Welcome to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, Again, appreciate you hanging out. Uh, If this is your first time tuning into the podcast, uh, I am an audiobook coach and producer. That's what I do for a living. That's what Robert Lane Coaching is all about. And I specialize in helping published nonfiction authors narrate their own audiobook. Do it in your own voice. Uh, that is so important for a nonfiction author. So if you're a nonfiction author and you have a book, or maybe you have a book that uh, has been out there for a while, maybe for a few years, now is a great time for you to uh, turn that book into an audiobook that you, as the author, narrate. Because there is no one on this planet, no one who can tell your story, who can speak your story the way you can. Only you can interpret your story the way you want it to be interpreted. You know, again, um, narrators are awesome. There are a lot of great uh, narrators out there, professional narrators, and uh, they, um, you know, have done a great job in uh, narrating other audiobooks. But for you as a nonfiction author, you're the most qualified because even though other narrators are great at what they do, it's still their interpretation. It's not your interpretation. Maybe there's a certain way that you would emphasize a word or a phrase or uh, something in your story that you're telling in you know in your book. Or especially if you're, you know, if you're a coach or an entrepreneur or a teacher or an educator or a poet, and uh, you know another narrator is not going to express your story the way that you would. So that's why it's so important for you as a the nonfiction author as the person who wrote the book, who lived it, who breathed it, who, <laughs> who put your uh, voice, which is in your written word, into your book, it only makes sense for you to narrate it. So uh, that's what I do as an audiobook coach and producer, helping authors turn their book into an audiobook. I have a program called Your Book, Your Voice, uh, which is the same as the podcast. Uh, and uh, basically, I take you through the process of setting up your recording space, teaching you the fine art of voiceover and narration, how to do a great, compelling narration. And, uh, and of course, you'll be published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books by the end of the six-week program. And it's only six weeks. It's not six months or a year or three months even. Uh, it just takes you six weeks from setup and preparation to narration to publication. It's that uh, that easy, that simple. And as your coach and producer uh, for your audiobook, I make sure that I am there with you. This is a do it with you program that I'm there with you every step of the way. And once your audiobook is recorded, I do all the editing for you, make sure it meets the exact specifications for publication, and then upload your files, uh, your audiobook for publication in the AAA. Again, Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. It's great, right? It is great because you have a great voice. You got to believe in your voice, of course, and you do have what it takes to narrate your own audiobook. So that's what I do as an audiobook coach and producer. Now, today's topic is uh, an interesting one and I think is very valuable, uh, not only for you as an author, but just in general. Um, the topic for today is don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, there's a lot of uh, authors and just people in general. Let's just make this general for a second here. Uh, there's a lot of people who don't ask for help because uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, I would say the highest percentage of reasons for people not asking for help is there is some sort of fear based reason for not asking for help. Uh, And it could be a number of things. Uh, We're going to get more into detail about that. But I wanted to share with you a story um, when I worked in the uh, entertainment business, uh, because that's what I did before uh, I started Robert Lane Coaching. I worked uh, in the entertainment world uh, for 30 plus years uh, in various facets of the business from uh, started off in radio, matter of fact. 
uh, doing radio and voiceover and commercials and hosting talk shows and music shows and that kind of thing. Uh, and then uh, moved on to do other things in uh, on camera, off camera, uh, post production, a big chunk of the work that I uh, have done in the business, and I still do, of course, as an audiobook coach and producer, is editing audio, doing audio post production. Uh, and so I do that. And also, um, yeah, worked about 14 years with uh, Fox Studios, 20th Century Fox, uh, before I left uh, the business. Uh, so the story I wanted to share with you uh, that is definitely tied into our topic of don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, when I was working at Fox Studios, uh, I had this idea, crazy idea, of wanting to uh, produce and direct my own film, my own short film. And, uh, you know, that's a big, big task. And there's a lot of preparation that happens to put together a movie. Uh, Pre-production, post-production, the production itself. There's a lot of work and a lot of things that you need to, to you know, figure out. So um, I had, a, uh, I had a, not a lot of knowledge about how to do it, but I realized that there were some things that uh, other people uh, are better skilled than I was at the time uh, to do this. And so I went out and I sought help. Uh, one of the first things I did was go to uh, one of the big wigs that worked for uh, Fox Searchlight. And uh, I was just asking for some advice. I said, hey, you know, I'm going to make this film. Uh, this is what I need to do. Uh, what, what is it that I need in regards to doing all the pre-production? What do I have to do to prepare? And uh, he gave me so much information that I, I'm to this day, I'm still so grateful <laughs> for all the information that he gave me. Uh, and he told me, you know, this is what you need to do for pre-production. You know, here, and he did, uh, here's the material for uh, doing this and doing that and doing budgets and doing, uh, you know, planning and uh, all this stuff. And, and it was just this great amount of information. So I was able to organize and get everything prepared. I probably spent uh, at least two months, maybe three months or so, just doing pre-production. So that's preparing before we actually did any of the shooting of the film. Uh, and then, of course, there's... Uh, uh, what do we do? We did um, auditions for the actors for the movie. Uh, this was a psychological thriller uh, that I produced uh, and wrote. And uh, then of course, uh, shooting locations, how we were gonna shoot, uh, all that stuff. And then once that schedule was set, then there was the post-production schedule. How much time do uh, we need to do the editing of the video, the editing of the audio, uh, all the way up to uh, premiering the film, and uh, which was a lot of work. And the point is, you can't be afraid to ask for help because I definitely needed to ask for help to do this project. It was a huge project. And uh, aside from my friend from uh, Fox Searchlight helping me, um, I got a lot of help from other people that uh, worked in the same department that I was working in at Fox. Uh, there was an audio department. Since I was an audio guy anyway, um, I was able to get them to allow me to go into their big fancy mixing bays so I could go in there and do all the audio post-production and do this awesome 5.1 surround sound uh, mix of the, of the movie, which is really cool to do. Uh, but I went in there on my own time. Uh, they let me use the studio. They didn't even charge me for it, which was really, really cool. Um, and then I had to find uh, a place to premiere the film when it was done, and I wanted to premiere it at Fox Studios. And there were, uh, there's like a, a few screening rooms and theaters on the studio lot, but of course to rent one of those is very expensive. Mm -hmm. So I, I actually asked the person who was in charge of booking the, uh, the theaters uh, about doing a screening and just, praying, please give me a break. <laughs> please, please let me do this without charging me thousands of dollars to rent the studio because there's no way I would have been able to afford it. And they actually came through. I think they charged me like 200 bucks, something like that. Super dirt cheap, which basically was paying the projectionist uh, to get him to come in for a couple hours to premiere the film, which was you know completely worth it. But uh, again, I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't 
ask for help. And you as an author, okay, when you're writing your book, did you ask for help or didn't you? Matter of fact, or if you are writing your book right now, have you asked for help with it or not? I mean, and there's a variety of things that you can do to ask for help, uh, but have you? Or are you one of those people who uh, want to uh, wear all the hats and do everything yourself? Now, another question I want to ask you is this, and feel free to uh, uh, put in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. You can tell me about your book. Uh, you can uh, let me know if you asked for help with it. Did you uh, hire a book coach? Did you, uh, you know, what did you do? Or did you not ask for help? So here's, the, the, again, another question. Why did you ask for help or why did you not ask for help? Maybe let's go with that route. What stopped you from asking for help with writing your book or doing something to help build your author brand? Was there something that stopped you from asking for help? What is it? I'd love to hear from you. Again, there's a variety of reasons. And uh, like I mentioned uh, earlier, fear really is a thing that, uh, that does create barriers. Uh, and being afraid uh, is a thing where um, we tell ourselves negative things. Oh, uh, this, they're not going to want to help me. Uh, they're, they're, they're not going to think that that my book is good enough or or even when I was doing the film. Well, why would why would someone want to help me with that? Why would somebody want to work on my film? You know, uh, they're, they're not going to think it's good enough. But what that is basically is you're telling yourself that you're not good enough. And that is a huge false belief because you are good enough. Right. You have a great story that you've written. Maybe you've got, you have your book published. It's out there in the world to read. And, you know, of course, I hope you're going to turn it into an audio book because you definitely need to do that. That's a huge market that you're missing out on if you don't have a, an audio book yet. But, um, you know, your, your story is out there. So you are a professional. You are an author. You are an author brand. Uh, your book is your product, your paperback, your ebook, if you have a hardcover, and of course, your audio book. That's your brand. That is you. That's what makes you, you. And, uh, you know, to uh, up your, your, your product, right? To uh, present your author brand in a way that really showcases how great you are as an author and your product is, you get people to help you out. You get people to help create this great brand that you have as an author. Same thing with uh, the clients that come in uh, for my audiobook coaching program. You know, a lot of authors have some reservations about their voice, whether it's the quality of their voice or maybe they hate their voice or they don't have confidence in their voice. And we talk about that and we build that confidence. We get rid of the fear. We get rid of the negativity and, you know, turn that around into being positive because think of it this way. I appreciate every single author that's gone through my program because they sought me out to help them create an incredible audiobook, which they have and which you can as well. So again, don't be afraid. And we're going to dive into this uh, deeper. Uh, well, I want to talk about the help stigma, okay? And I'm going to uh, get into more of what that is and what that's about. Uh, after we take a, a quick break. But again, our topic today is don't be afraid to ask for help. If there's something that you'd like to share about uh, uh, why you did or did not ask for help as an author or just in general, put it in the comments. Love to hear from you. All right. All right. You are listening to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Our, again, our topic is don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, this is the Bold Brave TV network that we're streaming live on. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? 
Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, welcome back to the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Appreciate you being here. Again, our topic today is don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, before the break, I mentioned about the help stigma. Now, what I mean by that is, you know, back in the day, let's go back in the day uh, about just the way people thought and maybe attitudes, especially um, with their job or career, um, asking for help was looked down upon, or at least that was the thought process for a lot of people. Uh, not that it was necessarily true, but you know, some people thought that you know, if I ask for help, I am showing weakness. Or, you know, maybe there's, you have people who, you know, are all macho and they're like, yeah, I'm not going to ask for help. Why would I do that? You know, it's this whole macho attitude. But, you know, that's where the mindset is definitely not skewed in the right way because it doesn't really represent weakness. It doesn't represent uh, being vulnerable. Um, asking for help is actually a good thing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a fear does play a big part in uh, people's uh, conception of whether they're going to ask for help with uh, writing their book or doing their audio book or uh, just you know any other thing in, in general. Maybe it's something at your job. Um, don't let that be a stigma. Okay, it's it's um, it's. I don't think I want to say detrimental, uh, but it can be. It can be detrimental to your business. Remember, you're an author. You're an author brand. You are uh, an artist. You are a creative. And you are in charge of your business, right? The catchphrase, you are the CEO of you, because you are. You are. And uh, you're in charge of the decisions that you make to move your business forward. And, uh, you know, again, and even to this day, there still is uh, this thought of the back in the day thinking of, you know, asking help is showing weakness. You know, my boss is going to think that I'm not good enough. Uh, my boss is, is going to reprimand me for asking for help. I mean, I, I can even tell you stories, even working at Fox, you know, that uh, there were times where, um, you know, I, I was working in a, in a um, uh, this is back when when digital encoding was just becoming a thing, right? Like streaming is not a big deal. We all know what that is. We know about streaming files and all that. But when it first started, that was that was something that was just really really new. And I was working in a department that was brand new that was creating these digital 
files of TV shows and movies and all that stuff. Uh, and it was a brand new thing. Streaming was a brand new thing. Uh, and most studios weren't even doing it. Actually, Fox really was uh, at the forefront of doing that. And uh, But that was a whole new world and a whole new concept that I was trying to grasp. And I remember, uh, you know, my boss uh, coming in and explaining all this stuff. Of course, he's going, you know, a million miles a second and you're trying to follow exactly what he's talking about. I'm trying to understand and grasp all this. And, you know, he came in a couple of days later and I had some questions and he was just like, oh, look, I already explained that all to you. And that I know creates tension, right? It, it makes you second guess because then you're like, wow, you know, I, I really needed to ask for some advice and some help on doing something for this project and I'm not getting it. And that, you know, uh, can definitely tap into that fear of, uh, pff, why, I'm not going to ask anymore. Why would I want to ask? Well, that's something that there are other ways to get help uh, when you run into situations like that. Now, I don't want to dive into you know a whole um, life coaching or career coaching thing, uh, which I have done about uh, uh, dealing with fear that way. But um, I just wanted to bring that up as an example that I can un understand that that maybe that is something that may stop you and may create that barrier of asking for help. Uh, but see, what's different, at least uh, for you as an author, is that you are, the, again, <laughs> I catchphrase, you are the CEO of you, which means you know the buck stops right here. You're the boss. And the decisions that you make for your business as an author are really up to you. Uh, and asking for help is something that's just part of your business. So it all makes sense for you to go out there and if you need help in doing certain things, uh, whether it's hiring a book coach or, you know, or uh, hiring other people that can help you through the book writing process or hiring an audiobook coach like myself uh, for doing an audiobook when you want to narrate your own audiobook. And again, as I say, as a nonfiction author, you definitely need to narrate your own audiobook. Um, you know, you're looking for help to enhance and boost your business and your author brand. And that's a really, really good thing. And that's being a smart business person. Okay. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Now, matter of fact, speaking of help, because I don't want to forget about this, is that I do have a freebie that I want to give to you. And that is an audiobook narration reference guide. And we're putting that up on the screen. Uh, for those of you who can see uh, the video portion of this as we stream live on the Bold Brave TV network, on their YouTube channel, of course, uh, and their other platforms. But uh, you, there you can see a free audiobook narration reference guide. And this is a great guide that I want to give to you uh, to help you with your audiobook narration. There's some really cool uh, tools and tips and techniques that I share in this downloadable PDF. Grab it. It's for free. It's my gift to you. Uh, because I want to help you. I want to make sure that you do a great audiobook narration. And this is a, a great way to um, have some tools and techniques handy. So download that. Take a screen grab of that if you're seeing it. Uh, the link, by the way, if you're listening to the audio-only version of the podcast, is a bit.ly link. So it is bit.ly forward slash narration reference guide. Okay. So it's bit.ly forward slash narration reference guide. Grab that, okay? Uh, and then you can always go to robertlanecoaching.com and uh, there's, there's, uh, you'll see it up there. You can grab it there as well. But uh, please grab your freebie. I want to give you that freebie, all right? Um, and uh, again, I want to help you. And uh, uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is when you're asking for help, it's a confidence thing. OK, um, you're looking for people to help build your business. OK, if there is somebody who can help you market your book, market your audio book, you seek them out. OK, you interview them, you see if you resonate with them. Uh, and that's really important. Uh, so, for example, I have my audiobook coaching programs called Your Book, Your Voice, six week program. Uh, before I enroll anybody into my audiobook coaching program, we have a meeting. We do a, a Zoom meeting so that we can meet each other, see each other, talk with each other. Um, you, you as an author will tell me about your book, uh, explain to me what it's about, what your 
uh, plans are for your book, why you want to do an audiobook, how we can market your audiobook, how we can do marketing strategies to help boost sales, not only for your audiobook, but for your other formats, whether it's ebook, paperback, and hardcover. But the point is having that conversation first. And that's really, really important because what that does is that develops a relationship. And this is why when you're looking for people to help you with uh, your author brand, it's good to talk to people to see if you resonate with them. Uh, you know, another example would be um, some people ask me, uh, hey, do you know um, an editor? Do you know uh, a person who's really great at doing uh, book formatting? Or uh, even, even if someone's looking for a book coach, you know, uh, the book coach that I worked with was, was awesome and uh, I highly recommend him. Um, and, uh, but I would, you know, give a couple of people and just say, talk with them, see if you resonate with them. And if you do, hook up with them. Okay. Same thing with my audiobook coaching program. I like to talk to the authors and talk to you first. And then, you know, if it resonates and we're on the same page and, and you're excited to work with me and I'm excited to work with you, then I get you enrolled and we get your audiobook done in six weeks with you narrating it. All right. So it's really good to, um, you know, talk with people. But again, seek people out. Seek out the people who can do things better than you can because that's just going to make the quality of your product better. That's, good, that's what makes you a better author. That's what makes your book better. That's when you have book A, which is done self-publishing version, book B, which is done uh, through traditional publishing, yet you put them side by side, and you know what? You can't tell the difference between which one was done by a, you know, a, a professional uh, book publishing company or a one that was self-published. And that's great because that means that you who have uh, maybe self-published your book did it the proper way. You sought out the people that can help you create the best product possible. I mean, when I did my book, same thing, self-published, but... I sought out people that can help me uh, make this the best I can possibly make it. And that included finding and interviewing a variety of, of editors. Uh, I think I interviewed at least five different editors and, and I wanted to see who I resonated with the best because you're working with this person who's working on your book. And this is a personal thing. Remember, as an author, you're a creative. So... Uh, you know, you want somebody who is working on your book that you really resonate with. And uh, that's the process that I did to find the editor that I ended up working with, who did a great job, loved her, she was great. And then I uh, wanted to make sure that my book was formatted properly uh, for ebook and paperback. And so I sought out formatters. And again, same process. You go through the process of interviewing people and talking with them and seeing who resonates with you. Uh, and then of, of course, cover designers. Uh, I went with a cover designer that uh, they did an okay job, but honestly, I probably would have gone with another cover designer because uh, I felt that uh, the communication was not as strong and quick as I had wanted it to be. So again, that's why it's really important to not just look at only well, how much is this going to cost? Because if you're going that route and you have that mindset, then you're uh, going on ways to cut corners to get a product done. And that's not how to run a business. You can't cut corners when you are running your own business. Or remember, as an author, that is your business. I don't look at any author who, whether you're self-published or you're with a traditional publisher, doesn't matter. You know, you wrote a book, you have a book that's published, that's out there in the world. You're a professional, especially, and I really want to uh, hit this home for uh, those of you who are self-publishing. You are a professional. I consider you a professional, not a hobbyist. Okay, you're the real deal. Okay, you are putting all the time and effort and creating this uh, great piece of work, this creative art that you have done in book form. Because you know what? Not everybody can write a book. And that's, you know, a testament to the skill that you have. And again, you can narrate your own audiobook. And I definitely want to make sure you uh, understand and appreciate your own voice because you can do it. Uh, and again, as a nonfiction author, 
You do need to narrate your own book because it's your story. Only you can, again, express and tell your story the way you intend it to be heard. But uh, again, getting back to asking for help, find the people that can do things better than you can. Seek them out. Talk with a variety of people. Interview them. Because, you know, it's, it's interesting. You are the boss, right? You are the CEO of you. You are the one holding the interviews. It's different now, right? It's like the tables are turned. It's funny. It's like you have to change your mindset. You know, if you have always worked for a company or worked for a business or you're going out there um, interviewing for a job, you're always on, on the interviewee side of the table and you're not the interviewer, but now you are because this is your business. And so you're talking to people and you're finding the right people that you can work with to uh, build your author brand. And that is just so important. Okay, so don't be afraid, again, to ask for help. That's crucial. All right. Now, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to talk more about uh, things that you can do to uh, ask for help and why it is important. And I want to touch on some of the intangibles of why it is important for you to uh, seek help from people and build a team for your author brand to help you, uh, again, create the best products you can possibly create. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. Uh, we're going to take, again, a quick break. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. And welcome back to Your Book, Your Voice. I'm your host, Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. And we are streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Now, if you are a nonfiction author, you have a book that's published, yet it is not in audiobook form, I would love to talk with you and tell you more about my audiobook coaching program, which is called Your Book, Your Voice. And you'll be published with your audiobook in six weeks. And that's where I take you from setup and preparation to narration to publication on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, that's the AAA. Uh, we'd love to speak with you and talk to you about your book. If, again, we resonate and it's something that, well, you do need to do it, by the way, because the audiobook world is growing and expanding and always has been for the last several years. More people ask for audiobooks, more people are buying audiobooks, more people are asking for audiobooks by brand name, meaning they say, hey, are you on Audible? Can I get your book on Audible? I'm going to, you know, can I get it off of Amazon? Can I, can I get it to, from Apple? Can I download it from Apple Books? Really important that your book is in audio 
form and you've got to have an audiobook and again the most important thing is of course for you to narrate your own audiobook but if you've been thinking about it if you're considering it uh, if you're planning on doing an audiobook reach out to me i would love to speak with you and uh, you have one simple action step right another catchphrase success maker Ah, action takers are success makers. I got that backwards. Action takers are success makers. That's my phrase. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to uh, find out more and uh, book a call with me, I would love to speak with you. Uh, we're going to put a graphic up on the screen for you who can see it that uh, this is to schedule a call for you to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, do a, a, an audiobook consultation call. And again, we talk about your book, we figure out what it is that you wanna do with your book in regards to marketing strategies. And I'll give you more details about the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program. And uh, I would just love to talk with you. And it, again, if it resonates, we get you enrolled. It's that simple. There's the link. Uh, it's uh, bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. That's the uh, uh, booking link. Again, it's bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. All right. And again, if you go to my website at robertlandcoaching.com, uh, there are lots of little buttons everywhere for you to book a call, book a call. So do it. I would love to speak with you about your book and tell you more about the audiobook coaching program, Your Book, Your Voice, in more detail. Uh, matter of fact, in the last segment, I'll give you some more details about the actual program, but just wanted to share that with you. Now, the story that I shared with you, by the way, about making my own film, which was called IDOL, I-D-O-L-L, -L, where I went out and sought help, because I did. Uh, I do talk about it uh, in my book, Lights, Action, You, which you can grab on Amazon. Uh, and of course, it's uh, ebook, paperback, and audiobook. Of course, uh, you, that story is in there as well as other stories uh, that I've shared from uh, my 30 plus years working in the entertainment business. And uh, then some tools and techniques and lessons that I've learned that I share when uh, I was uh, doing my career coaching and life coaching. Uh, that's what the book's all about. So uh, I think you'll enjoy the stories, the entertainment stories, and get some, some good, valuable information out of it. So just wanted to share that with you. Now, remember this when it comes to you, because you are the CEO of you. You're an author. You're an author brand. You're a professional. You're not a hobbyist. And you have a great product with your ebook, paperback, hardcover. And if you don't have an audiobook, you got to get an audiobook and add that to that arsenal of great products that you offer as an author. Okay. So remember, if you need help, ask for it. Bottom line, that's my piece of advice for you. Ask for it. You are the CEO of you, you're the boss of your business. You have to do what's best for your business. You need to make the investments in your business to move it forward. There are calculated risks when being an entrepreneur because you are an entrepreneur as an author and you need to have the confidence to take those risks and make those investments. Some investments are gonna be great. Some investments may not work out. Maybe you'll try something. Maybe you spent thousands of dollars on a marketing campaign and you got nothing from it. Well, you take that as a lesson, you know uh, what to do and what not to do. So the next time you do it, you're going to try a different approach. Or, you know, when you do try that different approach, maybe uh, you spent, you know, thousands of dollars on another marketing campaign, but it paid tenfold. You sold a lot of books, you got speaking engagements, you got all these other things that were a result of that. So, you know, you have to take those risks as an entrepreneur and as an author, because again, that is your brand, that is your business. Um, there is a difference, of course, between asking for help and being lazy, right? I know you're not lazy because you put the time and effort and energy and blood, sweat and tears and money and everything that you did to create that great nonfiction book that you published, okay? so. I know that you're not lazy. You put in the work. Now, if you are doing things or if you know people who do things to uh, get other people to do things for them because they're too lazy, the problem with that, of course, is that, first of all, it's just a bad way to run your business. Secondly, you're going to get subpar product, okay? When you are doing it with the lazy route, and again, I stress this so much 
uh, with my clients and, and with my social media and everything that I talk about. And that is not cutting corners. It is so important for you as an author, as your business to never cut corners, never, ever cut corners. And especially when you're doing an audiobook. And again, uh, this example, of course, uh, I just want to really hit it home because it is really important that you never, ever cut corners when it comes to your author brand, especially when you're narrating your audiobook. You, as the nonfiction author, need to narrate your own book because, and I've said it before and I'm going to say it a million more times, is that no one can replicate you. That's what makes you unique. That's why people love reading your book because you resonate with them. And what resonates with them is your unique style, your unique personality, and your unique voice, which is already in your written word. That's why you narrate your own audiobook, because no one can replicate you. All right. So again, getting back to cutting corners, you can hire a great narrator. That's that's great. Um, but you know, it's still their interpretation, no matter how great they are, it's still their interpretation. The other thing about cutting corners, and I really hope you never do this as an author, is going the AI route. Or, you know, uh, KDP, Kindle has been uh, sending out uh, emails to authors about using their virtual narrator, which basically is AI. And that is the biggest mistake that you can make as an author because what you're doing is that you're cheapening your author brand. That uniqueness that's in your written word is gone, all right? You have to have consistency with your product. Your product with your ebook, paperback, and hardcover has to be consistent with your audiobook. It has to be a consistent across the board or you're cheapening your product as an author. You don't want to cheapen your, your, your author brand. Of course not. This is your business. This is your company. This is who you are. So don't cut corners. AI is not going to represent you. You represent you. And only you can represent you. So please don't ever cut corners. Don't ever, ever cut corners. That's another big piece of advice that I wanted to share with you. Now, in regards to the fear aspect of asking for help, I want you to think about it this way. Asking for help, it's not a sign of fear. Matter of fact, it is the exact opposite. It is a sign of strength. It is a sign of strength because it shows that you are not afraid. You are not afraid to ask for help. And it shows strength. It shows that you're in charge of your business. It shows that you are the CEO of you. You are in charge of your business and you're doing whatever it takes for you to create the best possible product that you possibly can and putting it out there in the world. That's running a great business. And again, believing in yourself, which I know you do as an author, you wrote your book, you wrote this great nonfiction book. Of course you believe in yourself. You believe in yourself enough to follow your dream, to tap into your purpose, to tap into the core reason of why you wrote your book in the first place. Ah, it's such a beautiful thing. And now by turning it into an audio book, you are now solidifying your author brand. You're preserving the integrity of your written word, which is all part of your author brand because that's in your voice, right? The written word, your voice is in your written word. And by you narrating your own audiobook, of course, is preserving your author brand. Uh, so that is um, a great way to really establish who you are, what you do, and put it out there in the world for them to enjoy, right? And another thing about audiobooks is, again, it's a growing market. You should be narrating your own audiobook. And it does help in regards to uh, boosting revenue for your ebook, paperback, and hardcover. Because people buy audiobooks, and uh, nine out of 10 times, they're going to pick up your paperback or they're going to get your ebook. And a lot of people like to listen and read along at the same time. I'm finding that more and more. Uh, and, matter of fact, I even do that. I'll grab uh, the paperback version of a book that I'm listening to uh, 
in with the audiobook and i'm following along because there's some really great points especially if it's you know books about you know entrepreneurship and coaching and that kind of thing uh, that i can utilize and apply to my business to help build what i do with robert lane coaching i'm going to highlight in that book certain things that really stand out and that helps build my brand and my coaching business uh, and it does the same thing for you as you build your brand as an author business right your author brand so again if you need help ask for it okay that's the biggest uh, takeaway that i want you to get from this episode is not being afraid to ask for help getting the people who can help build your business uh, and remember by you asking for help is a sign of strength it is not a sign of weakness it is not a sign of vulnerability uh, it is uh, definitely something that you shouldn't allow fear to stop you from seeking out help for anything that you're doing all right whether it's writing your book whether it's working on a project whatever it is okay don't let anything stop you from moving your business forward okay all right you are listening to the your book your voice podcast I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. I do want to share with you uh, some more details about the uh, Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program that I teach. Uh, we'll dive into that uh, when we come back. Don't go away. Author, radio show host, and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your with Limitless Growth, by Universe. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation and welcome back to your book your voice i'm robert a lane with robert lane coaching Appreciate you being here. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Uh, just to wrap things up uh, or give you a quick summary of our topic of don't be afraid to ask for help. Key points, all right? If you need help, ask for it. You're the CEO of you. You need to make the decisions to help build your author brand. Seeking out help from people who can do things better than you can is the way to go. Uh, you know, being the jack of all trades, Right, being that rogue loner who does everything, you know, I do everything myself, is really not the way to go because you're not going to be able to put out as high of quality of product if you try to do everything yourself. Because there are people out there who could do things better than you can. Just accept the fact that you know there are, and that's okay. That's why, as an entrepreneur, because you are as an author, you are an entrepreneur. That's why you build a team. You surround yourself and build a team of people that can do certain things, certain tasks that enhance and build your business. That's why you as the boss, as the CEO of you, 
you go out there and you and you find people and you interview them and you uh, hire them to help you with the things, the certain things that you need to build your author brand. That's what's so important. Now remember, asking for help, again, is not a sign of fear. It is a sign of strength. It is showing you that you are in control of your business as an entrepreneur, as an author, as a nonfiction, uh, published nonfiction author. You got a book out there. This is your product. You are the boss. You are the CEO of you. This is your story. You know, you are a great entrepreneur. And that's just such a great thing to love and appreciate about yourself and especially love and appreciate the voice that you have. Your voice is in your written word. And if you don't have your book as an audio book yet, you need to do that and you need to narrate your own book. You have what it takes. You do have the skill and you do have the voice. Don't hate your voice embrace your voice. Love this beautiful voice that you have. Love this great uh, cranial <laughs> skull that you have uh, because that's your resonator. That is uh, That helps create the voice that you have. Love it, embrace it because you have what it takes to do it. Now, I created the Your Book, Your Voice audiobook coaching program to help you and to guide you with this Do It With You program that takes you from setup and preparation to narration, to publication on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books, the AAA, by the end of the six-week program. Six weeks, not six months, not a year from now. You get it done in six weeks, and you can do it, and you will do it. That's what my clients do, and they sound fantastic. Go to robertlanecoaching.com. If you scroll down, you'll see a section of samples of uh, authors who have gone through the program, and you can listen to their audiobook, and they sound great and you will sound just as good too. So basically the program is, is, is this. I'm gonna do a bird's eye view and, and it's divided up in three basic sections. The first is setup and preparation. And that is where I teach you how to set up your own recording space. And with that, the beauty of that is that you are on your schedule, okay? And that means that you have your recording space set up where you can record when you want to. You're not relying on having to pay you know thousands of dollars renting a, a recording studio somewhere uh, and hiring an audio engineer and doing all that stuff you can set up your own space it's not that difficult and i teach you how to do it and to help you do that when you enroll in the program i send you the equipment that you need to set up your own recording space your microphone everything that you need headphones we go over the recording program everything that you need to set up your own recording space i teach you how to set up your um, account for publication into Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. And uh, all everything that you need to be set up to do your audiobook on your time schedule, that's the way to do it. The next phase is the fine art of voiceover and narration, teaching you not only the practical aspects like mic placement and body posture and breathing and all that stuff, but more importantly, the intangibles, bringing your purpose, tapping into your why, getting excited about the reason why you wrote your book in the first place, bringing that emotion, bringing that energy, bringing it to life. And those are the intangibles that make a mediocre audiobook become a great audiobook because now you're bringing your uh, unique style, your, your unique personality, everything that's unique about you is coming out in your narration. And that is so important. So I teach you all the tools and techniques to do a compelling, engaging narration from opening credits to closing credits and being conversational, and most importantly, being authentic, being your authentic self, because that's why people resonate with your book in the first place. You're just bringing your book to life in the audio world by creating an audiobook. all right? Then the last phase of it is where I get to do all the heavy lifting. How about that? I do all the editing of your audio files so that uh, your audiobook sounds great, nice and clean and crisp and just sounds fantastic. And then I make sure that your audio files meet the exact specifications for publication. So you're guaranteed to be published on Audible, Amazon, and Apple Books. You're not going to be rejected. 
100% will not be rejected. And then we also talk about marketing strategies and things that you can do to do an audiobook launch and to promote your book and to boost sales and to utilize this great format to get other gigs like speaking engagements and doing other things to help promote yourself as an author and also promote the other formats of your book like your ebook paperback and hardcover all right so that's what we do in the audiobook coaching program so i'd love to talk with you about your book and uh, all you need to do is schedule a call with me all right book a call with me and it's just a simple quick audiobook consultation call um, we're going to put the graphic up there one more time so you can check it out and uh, take a screen grab of that. And uh, if you can see that, and if you're listening to the audio only version, uh, the link is this bit.ly forward slash audiobook onboarding. Okay. You can also go to robertlanecoaching.com and you can grab the, uh, the uh, link there to just where it says book a call, click the button, schedule a call. It's my calendar. You talk with me directly. You and I talk. If it resonates and you want to get your audiobook recorded with you narrating it in your own voice as it should be and have it done in six weeks, done deal. All right. So I look forward to speaking with you on that. Uh, so with that, my friends, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. I appreciate you hanging out. One last assignment. And that is this, when you're out and about, go and smile at a stranger, say hello to them, maybe give them a compliment, because that small gesture of kindness could be the one thing that makes that person's day, because you don't know what they're going through. And maybe just a little smile will just really brighten their day. And with that, go out there, be good humans. I'm Robert A. Lane with Robert Lane Coaching. This is the Your Book, Your Voice podcast. Thank you so much. We'll be back next week, of course, with another edition of the podcast. We're streaming live on the Bold Brave TV network. Appreciate you so much. Have a great week. We'll talk to you soon. This has been Your Book, Your Voice with host Robert A. Lane. Tune in each week for another powerful and informative episode of Your Book, Your Voice. Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave TV network.